伊兹加的。
trying to bring clarity to something I believe is a source of confusion. I think this is a common source of confusion. I think that uh, uh, progress in physics and in philosophy comes from clear ideas. So let me try to disentangle uh, one thing. So let me start very easy. Uh, suppose I have a, a, an harmonic oscillator, okay, something that oscillates, I can describe it, and uh, this is uh, the equation, the classical equation that describes it. You know how to write the quantum uh, formalism for uh, describing it, and uh, this is all, we all know how to do that. Um, suppose I have the solar system, um, then so the Newtonian physics is not enough, you know, relativistic physics, you have nice equations, people study the solar system, people study the galaxy and have equations that describe well or bad the dynamics of the galaxies, so maybe there's dark matter and so on and so forth, and there are other people who study the universe, and uh, they call themselves cosmologists, and what that's what is cosmology, that's what cosmology mean in, uh, means in uh, uh, today's uh, signs. Now, what are the equations here? Well, there is a Friedman equation. This is a version of it. There are some uh, perturbations. We're describing the perturbations. Why am I saying this totally obvious things? Because this is a harmonic oscillator. Is that equation describing everything here? Obviously not, right? Inside here, there's a lot of stuff. There are probably bacteria moving around, having their love stories, whatever they, they happen. Uh, there is uh, atoms with quartz, uh, with uh, gluons. Uh, okay. If I use, uh, if I describe a harmonic oscillator, a molecule, which is a great success in uh, quantum atomic physics, a molecule is perfectly harmonic oscillator. Some molecules, right, and it works perfectly well quantum mechanics, uh, uh, ignoring that inside the molecule there are atoms, inside the atoms there are nuclei, inside the nuclei there are protons, there are neutrons, and neutrons inside there are gluons and quarks, and who knows what else, we don't know. Uh, inside maybe nothing, maybe something. So what is the point I'm, I'm, I'm making? That in each of these cases, we're not describing everything that goes on in the system. We're describing some degrees of freedom of the system. Are we doing this sort of uh, randomly just because we like? No, because when I describe the motion of this, uh, what I'm looking at, what I'm carrying at, the way this is affecting me is in this amplitude, nothing else, okay? The way it hits me, the way the photons... So I'm describing the way this object affects me um, with a appropriate equation. And this is also true down here. You'll say, well, wait a moment, I'm not just describing the uh, scale factor when I do cosmology. I describe uh, the uh, perturbations. The perturbations include everything. Do they include everything? Uh, this is what we measure, right? And uh, in fact, uh, uh, the, 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 the L here, or the K here, goes all the way to 1500. It's a big number, right? 1500. So if you multiply by the polarization, whatever, 2000. So what are we describing in cosmology? We are describing the Hubble radius, roughly, divided by a few thousand, which is uh, a million light years. So, like when I do the harmonic oscillator, I'm sort of uh, uh, neglecting the, the, the love stories of the bacteria. When I do cosmology, I'm neglecting everything at a scale below that a million light years. Okay? Why? Because that's what cosmology, by definition of the cosmologists, that's what the cosmologists do. Okay? So, the fact is that cosmology is not about everything. Physical cosmology, what, when people talk about physical cosmology, they're talking about much less than everything. They're talking about a few degrees of freedom, a few thousand degrees of freedom, which are few compared to all the ones of the world, which uh, um, are defined by taking the large scale and making a mode expansion and just cutting out the high modes and just uh, 